Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Now last week on Garage Ed, we talked about voltage. Quick review, that was pressure, electromotive force. We build our fat here with voltage. Now we're gonna talk about current and resistance. That's amp flow. What's going on is electrons are gonna run and I can show it to you in action. If I pull the plug, the electrons are gonna run through here and then it's gonna do something in the form of work. That's called resistance. We're gonna use this water wheel as resistance. That's like your fuel pump, wiper motors. Any component that runs has a resistance value and that's a load. So watch, as I pull the plug, you can see the current, it's running through the water wheel, which is our resistance. As it spins the water wheel, it actually runs out as the voltage starts to run out. That's Ohm's law. Voltage and current's proportional with resistance. It goes down, this is gonna go up. Resistance goes up, it goes down. Now, to measure resistance, you can look at this graphic right here. You wanna disconnect it from the circuit altogether, and you wanna use a voltmeter. On our voltmeter, I'm gonna go to the little horseshoe here, which is ohms of resistance. Now, I got all these components at rockauto.com, variable valve solenoid, uh, engine coolant temperature sensor, injector coil, they all have a form of resistance. And if I take my meter, I got it hooked up, in resistance, I'm gonna come over to my solenoid here. And if I go across the two terminals, what I'm actually measuring is the resistance value of the windings in there. It's 7.8. Now, what does that mean? Well, you'd have to look in your service manual to find out a specification. <laughs> Rock Auto under literature, you can even get the service manual so you can see what the spec's supposed to be, if it's good or bad, prior to doing some more diagnostics. Now, amps, look at this graphic. Amps, we have to do a couple things. We have to shunt the meter. Well, what does that mean? I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna switch it to amps down here, and then I'm gonna take the positive lead, but I'm gonna move it over to this side of the meter. Well, because we're gonna take the electrons and we're gonna run them through the actual meter here. So I switch it over to amps, and then you can see I turn on our little board right here, I got this motor running. What I wanna do is I wanna disconnect the series, the circuit here that's going to it, and in series, I wanna hook up this amp meter. So what's happening? Check it out, the motor's running. Well, those electrons are running through the meter here, and it's counting them. Now, there's two types of resistance. We can see right here, there's electrical resistance in our wires. They start to get hot, you got a problem, you start to do bad wiring like that, that's resistance, that's electrical resistance. You can see the wire right here, not much is gonna run through that. That's not good, but there's also mechanical resistance. If I reach down here and I try to stop that motor, it starts to make a higher amp draw. Now that's important. When you start working on your car and you start getting components with mechanical resistance, I can demonstrate it right here for you with this fuel pump. Now fuel pumps are a big amp draw. If I hook it up, I got my meter in series, I hook it up, it's actually running. The electrons are running through and we're looking at 6.24 amps. That's fine, but let me simulate. Now you don't want to do this at home. Don't go pinching your fuel line, but if I pinch this fuel line right here, you can watch that amp. Look at that. Things going up. I mean, it starts blinking on that meter. I don't want to go too high, but I can get that thing up to about 10 amps of amperage draw. What's that doing? Well, it's heating up that component. It's causing problems, maybe premature failure. You can see a fuel filter. This is a good fuel filter right here. And then if you got one that's clogged up, well, it's gonna look like that. And that's gonna cause a massive amp draw. That's a problem. So you guys don't want that. So make sure that you measure amps. Make sure that you make these tests on your car so you can keep your components lasting a long time. Now, Tom, he has all these components and he's over the table. We'll check in with him. But before we do that, Brian wouldn't let me live it down. He built this engine a couple seasons ago. And it still runs. Over at the table, we looked at a VVT, a variable valve timing solenoid. We looked at an ECT, an engine coolant temperature sensor, an injector, and a coil. Tom, whether it's an actual injector moving inside or it's just a coil with magnetic induction, parts don't last forever. That's not the case. I mean, and chains are only as strong as its weakest link. So you guys offer units for a whole assembly, don't you? Right, right. You wouldn't change your, your uh, oil filter and not change your oil or vice versa. You, if you've dis done a lot of disassembling, replace everything at once that might, might fail. If, if, if one part is worn out, then the parts surrounding it might be worn out. Um, you brought the example of fuel filters. A lot of newer cars have a, a fuel pump and housing assembly that is in, in the gas tank and includes the fuel filter, the uh, fuel pump, and, and the sending unit for the gauge. If, if one of those parts is worn out, then another part may be worn out. And you're in, so replace the whole thing at once versus having to take your gas tank off again. Um, and as you mentioned, the, the fuel strainer, if you don't clean that out and replace that, you're gonna certainly damage the, the pump. And it applies to other systems too. 
Um, if you're replacing your brake rotors, you got to get new pads. So we'll have a kit for you get your rotors and your pads together so you don't have to guess what you need. For your suspension, if you're replacing your struts, your mounting points might be rusted out or crumbling. Uh, your springs might need replacing. So get a, a complete assembly. It's faster to install and you, you don't have to do the job over again you know, a couple years down the road. Well, I'm sure glad you're here. Yeah, they're hearing it from you, not from me, because here we're all about doing the job right and doing it first time. We don't want to redo the job over and over again. That's pretty cool. But we'll be back with more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com right after this break. You don't want to miss it. We're going to the video email question of the week.